So it's been about a month since I built this little rainforest wall terrarium back here. There's a little b-roll to kind of show you what this thing looks like up close. It's in that month since I built this dripping rainforest wall terrarium back here. I've encountered numerous issues, all sorts of different problems. I've had all sorts of leaking problems with this. I had an issue where my morning geckos that are living in this terrarium were escaping out of the I still haven't even discovered exactly where they were escaping out of the top there. And that's part of the fun, right? That's part of the reason that we do these things. It's part of the reason that we build terrariums is so that we can run into issues and we can put our little problem solving caps on and we can figure that stuff out. And that's what this video is about. We're gonna go through all the issues that I've had with this thing. I'm gonna tell you how I solved them. I'm gonna tell you the things that I'm still sort of working on. And um, yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. It's a dripping rainforest wall terrarium update video. And I think I've got at least a tip or two in this video that I can share with you to hopefully, you know, help you avoid some issues that you might run into if you build a really high humidity, um, you know, dripping rainforest wall terrarium like we got going on back here. So without further ado, let's actually jump into this thing. Let me give you one more shot. This is the dripping rainforest wall terrarium. Of course, I did a whole video on actually building this thing. I introduced you to the morning geckos that are living in here which I'm not sure if we'll be able to find any. I have seen all three of the original morning geckos that I put into this thing. And the fact that I've literally seen with my physical eyes all three morning geckos that I originally placed into this terrarium is an important point because the first big issue, well, it was the simple fact that my morning geckos kept escaping every single night. I would turn all the lights off in the plant room at the end of the day. And for the first flipping week, I couldn't figure out what was going on because every time I'd come in here in the morning to check on them, I'd lift this little, uh, this little light canopy up and I'd have a tiny little morning gecko face staring right back at me, and usually from somewhere right in the center of the, uh, of the top piece here. I guess they liked kind of basking under the, uh, under the lights at night, which was actually quite a good thing because despite the fact that these morning geckos were escaping every night, you know, for whatever reason, it's probably just the heat. I like to think that maybe they were, they were missing me and they didn't, they wanted to be in the terrarium. They just were kind of exploring their new environment. But nonetheless, they would always be sitting right up here under the canopy in the, uh, in the, in the morning. So I'd come in here and I'd scoop them up and I'd put them back into the terrarium, get them all settled up. For the first few days, I just kind of thought, well, maybe it's a fluke that the morning geckos are escaping every night. And I didn't put too much thought into it until eventually I realized, you know what, this is not good. This cannot be a, uh, a daily activity because eventually, eventually I'm not gonna get so lucky and see the morning geckos, you know, hanging right up here under the canopy. So I poked my little eyes all over the terrarium and I started to think about all the little tiny spots that they could possibly be escaping every night. And you know what I discovered? And oftentimes I would see the morning geckos kind of hanging out right in the, uh, right in the little, in the little cracks in these things. So I thought it has to have something to do with that. They must be escaping through some tiny little hole that's in, that's in the top of these things. Now morning geckos are like the tiniest, they're one of the tiniest geckos I think that, uh, that people keep. I don't know if they're the tiniest gecko in the world or not. Any tiny little space that a tiny little morning gecko can squeeze out of, they probably will squeeze out of it. In my experience, it always ended good because they were always just waiting right up here under the canopy for me. But nonetheless, but nonetheless, the way that I eventually solved the morning gecko escaping problem is you can't really see it anymore, but I came in here and I stuffed toilet paper in all of the tiny cracks. Everywhere that I could find a tiny crack in the lid of this terrarium, I stuffed it full of toilet paper and then I just took some, you know, heavy duty kind of Gorilla Glue stuff. I'm not endorsing using Gorilla Glue tape or anything like that. It just happened to be the only thing that I had on hand. In fact, what I wish I had had on hand to do this project was, was electrical tape because electrical tape is a lot easier to kind of mold into all the little crevices and everything like that. What I'm trying to get across here is that what I had to do is I had to go in and find every tiny little crack, even the little cracks that I thought there's no way that something can be poking its way through there. I went through, I found all those little cracks. I filled them up with toilet paper so the geckos wouldn't come exploring and get stuck on the tape and everything like that. And then I sealed it all up as tight as I could. And since then, I'll say that I haven't had one single escaped uh, morning gecko when I've come in here to check on them in the morning or anything like that. But that's not all. That's not even the biggest problem I face. The next big problem I ran into is that my terrarium was leaking. It's a thing that everybody's scared about when they set up their terrarium. I would normally find, you know, a little puddle, maybe that big. It would just simply be little puddles of water that kind of collected around the feet of this thing. And after a ton of banging my head against the wall, after a ton of deliberating how I'm going to have to go in here and seal up all the edges and rip this thing apart and start all over again, 
After all of that anxious paranoia, I finally started thinking a little bit clearer, and much like I solved the problem of the morning geckos escaping, I looked a little closer at what was going on inside of here. I'm gonna show you on my larger terrarium over here because it's a little easier to demonstrate, but these are Reptizoo uh, terrariums. I love these terrariums because I love the simplistic look of all of that going on. It doesn't have a whole bunch of plastic. I just really love the look of these terrariums. I fell in love with them. You can get them easily on Amazon. This bottom portion, the aquatic portion, it comes in all one piece. And then all of these glass panels right here, the two doors, all of the panels in the back, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six different glass panels on here. They basically come in a little stack. They're just laying flat. I still love Reptizoo terrariums. I'm going to continue using them, but there's one thing that I never considered. Now this is a high humidity terrarium. So when I first set this thing up, almost constantly, the front glass, the side glass, all of that would be full of condensation. Everyone kind of gets that. You know, there's water flowing down the wall in here. There's water all in the bottom of this thing. It's a high humidity terrarium. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of little water molecules floating around in this thing and they have no place left to go except for right onto the glass. So the glass ends up collecting all of it. And then as that water would drip down off the glass, it would collect into these little channels here, the little places where you actually kind of assemble the glass together. And because none of this is sealed, because this is just kind of you know, laid in there, it doesn't have silicone or anything like that. I didn't seal it up myself. Because of all that, the water would just, you know, slowly drop by drop, drip down here, and end up you know, kind of creating a little, a little pool. I just hadn't considered that because these top glass panels hadn't been sealed in, that of course they were going to collect all the water and they were going to drip it out there and I was going to have leaking issues. So I had major leaking issues from the very beginning. In fact, when I first set this thing up, I had a dual spray nozzle in here that was also misting this thing. Um, at one point I had it running twice a day and of course that was only exacerbating. And if you haven't said that word exacerbating in a while, try it out. It's a lot of fun to say. But having the spritzer running this thing was exacerbating the problem even more. Until finally, finally, I figured out how to solve that. Believe it or not, the solution was so super simple. You see those fans? sitting on the top of the screen there. All it took is a little bit of basic science that we all learned back in school when we were growing up. The only reason I was having condensation all over this glass was because there was no air movement. There was no fresh air coming into this thing. There was no way for the old kind of stale air to escape out of this thing. So this little ecosystem was just doing what little ecosystems do. And it was trying to get rid of that condensation somehow. And unfortunately, the way that it initially found for me was to pull all that condensation on the glass and have it pour out all of these little seams here until I finally added these two little fans in here. The only modification I actually made to these things is I took one of them and I flipped it around. So this fan right here is actually pushing air out of the terrarium. That's why I have it kind of positioned, you know, right up in here in the, uh, in the front area, the open area. And then this little fan back here, and this part is very important to the process. This little fan back here is actually pulling air in to the terrarium. So basically what's going on is this fan's kind of pulling fresh air in. It's recycling its way through here. This fan's pushing out all the old gross stale air. And what do you know, about six hours after I installed those fans on the top of this terrarium, I had almost zero condensation on the glass and I've had almost zero condensation ever since. And not only does that obviously make the terrarium a lot more enjoyable to look at because you can actually see through the glass, but it also solved almost all of my leaking issues. Yes, I still do get a little bit of droplets that come down here and every once in a while I'll find a tiny little, a tiny little, you know, speckle of a puddle down by one of the feet. All of those little water droplets that are created by the humidity, by that waterfall in there, by the entire base being full of water, all of those little water droplets can find their way right out the top of the terrarium through, uh, through using one of those fans. Since I've installed the fans on the terrarium back here, I haven't noticed any real changes in the humidity or anything like that. The only changes I've really noticed is the fact that I can actually see into the glass now and the fact that I don't have to walk in here every single morning and find little puddles by the feet of my terrarium. In addition to that terrarium leaking, the original auto top off container that I have here to hold the water that runs what used to be misters up there well, it was leaking initially as well. And believe it or not, it was actually a pleasant surprise that the auto top off container was, uh, was leaking down there. Number one, I got it replaced really easy. I love Amazon's return policy. So I got a brand new one that's you know actually functioning the way it should. But number two, while I had that auto top off container disconnected, I obviously didn't have the spritzers running a few times a day in the, uh, in the terrarium here. 
And uh, I kind of came to the conclusion at the end of a few days that I didn't really need the spritzers. In fact, they were only just adding more to the problems that I was having. So I decided to just leave the spritzers out altogether for this terrarium. I figured that the, uh, that the waterfall flowing back there was giving plenty of, uh, of humidity and everything that all the plants and everything need. And since I've actually had this running, if you look really close, down here even in this back corner, I mean, the wall is just kind of saturated back there. So moisture particles and all that stuff, it's getting everywhere it needs to in this terrarium without needing to use, you know, additional spritzing or anything like that. So I decided to disconnect that. I thought initially that I had made a grave mistake, you know, making sort of a diagonal from corner to corner um, background. Now my initial idea was to build the wall at an angle like that so that we'd have two visible panes, this one right here and this pane right here. Because this is sitting on sort of a corner, in my room, I just wanted to have it, uh, I wanted to have everything visible as you walked around the whole corner. So it makes sense. And it turns out in the end that as you can see, building it at an angle like that is perfectly fine. But nonetheless, there was a few things that I had to sort out and a few um, little hurdles that creating the, uh, the back wall at an angle like that gave me. So I mentioned that all the condensation was building up on the glass, it was leaking out the sides there. I mentioned that I had a leaky auto top off container and misters that were exacerbating the, uh, the situation. So I disconnected all of those. I got fans, I got fans up in here to solve the, uh, the condensation on the glass issue. And the last problem that I was having is when I built this terrarium, the pump that I put behind the wall that actually creates that whole dripping uh, waterfall effect that you see going on in there. In case you don't see it, get a little bit of that uh, waterfall action. It's the pump that I actually put behind the wall to sort of create that waterfall effect. I just sort of plumbed it into the thing. I had no way of actually regulating the uh, the speed of the water that was going to be coming out of that pump. So when I first had this thing running, that pump was doing exactly what it was supposed to do. It was chugging up water from the bottom here. It was pushing it out through the top there, but it was doing it with such a force that it was spraying water all over the terrarium. Unlike how you see that waterfall just kind of, you know, dribbling down the middle now, before it was, you know, pushing water out all over the place. It's pouring all down the sides here. It once again exacerbated the leaking situation that I was having. Because again, just to recap, the pump that I used behind the wall to actually create the waterfall, the thing that actually brings the water up from the bottom of this terrarium to the top of this terrarium, then spills it back down over this wall, I had no way of actually controlling how fast it was pushing that water over there. And it was basically pushing water to all the corners of the scenes that aren't sealed up, basically just because of the design of this terrarium. And once again, creating leaks. In fact, at some days, even half the water in this terrarium would be leaked out all over that just because the waterfall was going so crazy and spilling water all over the place back there. It's not quite as linear as I'm expressing it right now. Initially, I had to figure out why this thing was leaking in the first place. I thought it was this bottom aquatic portion. I thought it just hadn't been sealed right. My initial thought was, of course, the manufacturer, you know, didn't do, didn't do it right. But nonetheless, how did I actually solve the waterfall issue? The last issue in my, uh, in my little conundrum of leaky terrarium uh, problems that I discovered. Oh, if I spin the terrarium around just a little bit, you can see that the way that I designed this thing is I've got a, uh, my little porthole that goes back to my pump there. So I've got to take my little bits of toilet paper that I told you I've got stuffed in here because this was all preventative to, to keep those morning geckos from escaping. I almost forgot that, that was my first little issue. So if I open that back container, you can see right in there, that little red knob. And you get, you're gonna see if you can see the pump. I don't know if you can. can you see that pump down there? So that's what's called a sump pump. That was actually a good decision that I made. And the reason that I chose a sump pump is because they're actually made to run in like a lower, um, a lower level of water. So even if this terrarium drops down to about an inch or so, the pump that I actually used in this thing can still pump water up and you know keep keep that waterfall going. So that was my first good thought, but the thought that I never had was to actually initially buy a ball valve so that I could control the speed of the water coming out of that sump pump. And once I actually figured that out, got this ball valve, hooked it in line on the pump down there. Well, from there it just became a matter of adjusting it until it was what I considered just perfect. And I'm happy to report that since I've made all those changes, since I sealed up the top to prevent the geckos from escaping, since I added the fans to bring fresh air and get rid of all the old stale air in this thing, and since I added that ball valve to the pump that was creating the waterfall in here, and even when I finally realized that despite the fact that it's cool having spritzers come on every day, 
that this terrarium behind me just didn't quite need it. Well, that was just what it took to solve all the issues that I couldn't quite see coming when I first put this thing together. But nonetheless, we're all pretty, pretty easy fixes. It just took a little bit of thinking. It took a little bit of, you know, why is this actually happening? Let me kind of think through it rather than just jump into conclusions. But let's not end this video without going some of the cool stuff that I've been experiencing over the past month with this terrarium. I wish I could get some morning gecko footage, but they're all so flipping tiny. This right down here is what's called a red robin begonia. And when I initially put this thing in, it didn't have any of this new growth right here. So both of these little, uh, little leaves have just kind of sprouted out. You can see all of my ficus pumula it's kind of adhering pretty good, but that's what ficus pumula does. I mean, it pretty much just grabs on anything and just adds that nice, bright, vibrant green, which is what I love so much about it. This dragon's tongue right up front, it's doing really well. It just looks kind of like it's standing at attention. It's funny because sometimes the morning geckos will just kind of hang out on these leaves right here, right up, right up by the front. These earth star bromeliads back here, they're doing just fine. Um, this one initially had a ton of water just kind of running over it, you know, before I had actually fixed the pump problem. So one of the leaves kind of got all soggy and molded off a little bit. So I clipped that off. But other than that, since I've turned off the misters, since I've, you know, really started managing the, uh, the conditions in here by using the fans and all that sort of stuff, I mean, all of the plants have just really taken off. There'll always be adjustments and things that I'll be making on this uh, terrarium. But at least for now, all the major issues are dealt with. At least for now, the morning geckos aren't escaping every night. At least for now, I'm not coming in here and finding these little pools of water down by the feet of this thing. At least for now, this thing is just sort of, you know, fitting into place. I'll be honest, when I first set this thing up and I realized I was having these issues with the leaking and the morning geckos escaping, I mean, it was obviously a bit of a bummer. I thought, what, what is my problem? I can't build a terrarium properly even. And for a while, it became something that was really stressful. It became the, uh, the inspiration for me to do a whole lot more research though. And it became the inspiration for me to become a, uh, a better terrarium keeper, if I do say so myself. Now I know that it's essential to have fans on your terrarium. Now I know that it's essential to pay attention to the design of your terrarium. Now I know that when I build this big terrarium back here, all of these little open seams and everything like that, I'm gonna pay special attention to seal all of that stuff up before I actually get everything all put together. And that's the best part about all this stuff because despite the fact that it's stressful and it just makes you feel like you've wasted all of your money and it makes you feel like you can't do anything right, like you can't, like you did all your research and you, like you did all your research and you should have been able to build a terrarium that works just like everybody else's that you see out there. But for some reason you weren't able to do that. Once you get over all of that stuff, once you get over all of that nasty negative talk, and you start thinking a little bit more clear and you start thinking about how do I actually solve these problems rather than just whining about the problems. Well, then you, well, then you. Well, at that point, you just become smarter. You become better for the next project. Well, at that point, you just become smarter. You become more prepared for your next project. And let's face the facts. The reason that we run into these problems is why we love this stuff. It's fun. It's fun getting in there and solving problems. And although I will admit that every once in a while when you're kind of doing something DIY or you're building something on those rare circumstances where it just kind of all comes together perfectly and it works out great, that feeling is amazing. But you know what feeling is just a little bit more amazing? Do you know what feeling is just a little bit more amazing? It's the feeling of when you're faced with all sorts of problems and issues and you take the bull by the horns, you think a little bit more clearly, you figure them out and at the end of it you've got something that you can be proud of back here so that was my video to give you an update of the uh the dripping rainforest morning gecko terrarium back here to give you an idea of all the issues that i've been facing over the past month or so since i set this thing up to give you an idea of how a lot of times the problems that you're facing the issues that you're having are actually a little bit easier to solve than you think you just got to sort of clear your head and uh and do it i purposely let the natural light spill in through the windows for this video because I just love the way, I love the way that the greens and the reds and the pinks and everything just pops in that natural sunlight. And don't get me wrong, I do love the Spectral Designs custom light that they have made for it, but I mean, there's just something about that natural light pouring in there that makes it kinda, 